Thank you. I hope that you hear me. Uh, I'm uh, having this uh, presentation from Impact Festival, <laughs> which is different kind of impact event other side of the Europe. But uh, I'm talking to you, talking for you today about concept called circular economy. So the concept uh, itself means that uh, it's a consumption model where no waste is generated. So, or at least moving towards it, zero waste generation. And how can we make it work in the practice, in the real world? And that is what Fairone is doing uh, in, in quite m many markets already. But let's look, let's take a step back. If you take previously mentioned iPhone, for example, or other, you take the consumer electronic products, for example, then uh, something which is uh, quite uh, clear that the majority of energy uh, materials uh, is, uh, and uh, resources are used when those products are produced. So 95% roughly from the total uh, energy needed. Uh, the rest of it is like transportation and other smaller things. So to put this into context, how big the resource consumption is, this is a small quiz. Since I don't uh, know if I can talk with you, uh, like can you answer really to us so I can, I can give you the right answer to put things into the context. So if you take one single smartphone, if you count the ones which you have in your pockets or the ones which you have in the drawer for the extra phone or some, whatever, doesn't matter. Each one of them, only one smartphone, to bring it to the world, it consumes 80,000 liters of water. And it's not my water, it's not your water, it's our like joint water in the world. So basically that's, that's how much it's used uh, with the electronic products. So it's a very, very... Bar, large part of the resource consumption what goes into those products what we are using for our daily communication and uh, or just for fun or, or doing work so how the consumer behavior have been uh, changing uh, over time like when we look back we bought something or if we, take, we look back we look back to our even like generations back we bought something we were happy that we were able to get the ownership of this product. We kept it a long time or short time. And then uh, we, we kind of stored it to somewhere. Um, so just for extra phone or extra computer, if my, like the main one breaks down. And, and uh, when the day, it, when it, it was like time to clean the cupboards, then we basically throw it away because we understood it wasn't like useful anymore. Where the world is going and where we are part of making this shift happening together with many, many other brands and participants who are striving towards this circular economy is something which is a responsible buying to so buy something, um, I would say, different way where the focus is on the usership and you are not... Uh, looking only the time what uh, you have with this product, but you are also like uh, thinking about how the product was produced and also what's going to happen with the product when you are done with using it. And so uh, everything is around usership, uh, the, the consumption model, not so much to do with the ownership anymore. And then uh, recycling the used products which can't be used anymore and using the products, uh, like giving to the products uh, multiple life cycles, so they wouldn't uh, stay just lying there for the people who are not uh, really able or willing to extract value from the pro products anymore. And I'm talking about you now no, those products which, which you still have, but you are not using. So what does it basically mean? that the uh, brands themselves, if you talk about brands like Apple or HP, L LG, 
the ones we all know and use Samsung's in the world, they are already redesigning how they produce their products because the current uh, products, consumer electronic products are mostly produced from uh, virgin materials. So meaning somebody mines a metal, it's put into the details and then combined into a new phone and sold in in the store and then you buy it. Uh, the new way of production is uh, actually taking the same products what are coming from consumers which are used and the same products can be added extra warranty extra services and bring it to the new customer segment for example more price sensitive customer segment and then when they are done using those products only then those products are going to back to the production line which you can call like the assembly line which uh, producing products in a way that they take those used products into components and they use the components in in new products. So that's the way the production is moving further. So let me see my clicker. Aha, uh -huh, now it moved. Uh, so now a little bit about what Feron does, taking into the uh, consideration the context of what is going on uh, as a macro trends. So we are giving uh, brand uh, tools so they can design this circular economy cycle. And they can, they can design it not only because they want to be good brands and good like the managers of those companies want to be good citizens. So it's not driven only by the morality but it's driven also by the business because it is better business for them and their owners. Uh, so basically what, what happens is that they, the product is produced, it's sold, it's used and it's reused and then recycled. So the brands can actually uh, reduce their dependence on silicon shortage, uh, on, uh, on the situations where they can't get access to the virgin materials. And they can still uh, keep using the components and their own used, old products because there is a logical way that uh, the consumers are not using the products too long or too short. They are using it the right amount of time and they are giving them back, preferably in a good working condition. So... Our business model is also driven by United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which uh, do, uh, which are aligning with our mission. So building an infrastructure, which would enable brands to enable circular economy. That's basically what we are doing. Financial infrastructure, process, logistical. So basically do, being the one enabling the closing the circle so if they work with us, they, they get turnkey solution. And uh, when they have started using it, then the consumers can have a choice. Do I want to consume my phone, laptop, coffee machine, oven, uh, basically any product uh, which uh, is uh, following the same model sustainable way or the, I just want to buy it. So basically, we are giving the option, which in garbage is this sustainable consumption. Yeah, so basically what it brings, it brings a dramatic economical and ecological impact to the way we, like changing the way how we have been used to use our electronics. And uh, that also brings the extension of life cycle because not all the consumers are staying. Quite many of them can still use the products if you are not uh, still willing to use them. And uh, the used products can be used to be mining the materials. So meaning that the materials wouldn't be mined on Africa on the mines, but from the from the products which the initial producer have made and of course 
the producer knows their own products, weaknesses, details, and everything best. So that's why they are the most effective ones to extract the value from their own production. And we are basically the methodology uh, or technology and business processes who are putting together the let me see if, my, if I can get the next slide. Um, yes, we have the technology who established this uh, unique partnership to enable it. And the partnership consists of the brands and retailers. It consists of the banks of those specific countries we are operating. And we are the one platform basically tying it all together. So each participant of this uh, framework is bringing something on the table. So we are br uh, bringing table a subscription platform, basically, which puts it all together. We are bringing on the table the residual value management. So basically, we are telling uh, how much monetary value is still like two-year-old iPhone has or three-year-old laptop has. And uh, we create in cooperation with retailers and brand those predictable product life cycles. Like what is the reasonable life cycle for a developer's computer who is writing a code? Or what is the reasonable life cycle for the average uh, person who like wants to watch TV, for example? Like how, how long does this person should have this product and use this product? And then we have integrated banks into this uh, circle. In, uh, Scandin uh, in Scandinavia, we are using a resource bank, for example. In Baltics and Poland, we are working together with InBank. So the banks are doing uh, end consumer behavior and credit check processes to understand are they credit worthy and uh, can they really pay for their monthly for the products. And then we integrate into those platform, the retailers, the Apples, who we work, Apple, who we work with in Baltics and uh, Poland, uh, Steel, with whom we work in Scandinavia, some large retailers, etc., etc. So, so what we have learned through this cooperation is that, uh, and this is something which was uh, repeating plat uh, pattern from uh, Norway first and then uh, uh, Sweden when it became uh, like quickly very popular. And uh, we, we got like more than uh, 40,000 customers back then on the plans. So when we went out the survey and we got uh, 4,000 answers where uh, 70 or 68.2 percent customers told that they would not have made a decision to take this product if this more let's say service-like and sustainable option wouldn't have been available so that basically was the customer's word so what does it mean for the brand and retailer who is working with us it's, it basically means that they will get more uh, business. What it means for the consumer, for them it means that they will, they have more convenience uh, by, they can stay up to date with the technology and not worry that the products are vending in the landfill. It becomes also more affordable because you don't need to pay for the value what you are not using. So you need to pay with us uh, only for the part of the product price what you actually use over the time when you are using it. And then we are taking care of the rest. And how this all like emphasize and supports the circular economy, the consumer who otherwise would they also need a laptop like i'm bringing you one example let's say that you are a software developer and you need to do a very powerful computer to do your job and you can use it maybe maximum two years because then you need another powerful computer 
So what happens is that the the consumer two years from now, if you as a developer doesn't give your computer further, you put it in the drawer and and use it as extra one, just an accident or just in case there. Then the person needs to buy something else, something cheaper, something produced, uh, which which is also produced from the virgin materials. So basically, we are bringing the like uh, products which have had their first life cycle to the market and enable uh, consumers to have access to those products. This is like the first step what we are doing. And why do we work with those brands? The, the big picture there is that if and when, not if, but when they have sufficient and quantity of used products coming back to them in a predictable condition in, from the predictable uh, areas of the world and in a significant quantity, then they really can build up their assembly lines, then they can build up their uh, refurbished um, product lines. So meaning they can build a business case out of it. So they can really close the loop because the current consumer um, uh, consumption behavior, where was my previous speaker said that don't buy new product when it comes out because it's not sustainable, correct in some sense. But uh, what happens is that if you use your and the brand doesn't know when it potentially could come back to them and when they could either sell it to the somebody else with the subscription or uh, take it to the components. They, they, they can't um, plan any business processes around it. I'm not sure if you are aware, but around 83% of the consumer electronic products are not refurbished. So they are going directly to the waste and all the value of the silicon chips, everything what could be very, very well used are there because consumers don't tell to the other side who could still use something with the product when they stop using it. So we are there here, there to close the circle with that. So that's in a nutshell what I wanted to talk with you about today. So, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you're still with us. Uh, oh, here you are. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, do you have any questions for our excellent speaker? Do I see a wave of hands? Not too many. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, myself then. So, um, how do you break that circle uh, of uh, of sad statistics uh, that uh, most of um, consumer electronics go straight to the dumpster? I mean, you're there for sure, but I mean, is that enough? Uh, I don't think most consumers uh, know how to find you. So what are what are the what are the steps that we need to take as a society, uh, and also as regulators, perhaps in the, in the political framework, to uh, to actually start reusing the the resources that we have put in to unsustainable electronics. Um, I would say that. Uh Consumers don't need to find us, they need to find the brands they love. So if they find Apple, they find us. If they find Samsung, they find us. So meaning the commercial approach to this model, I believe, works like well compared with the, um, like what the, could be enforced by the regulator. Because enforced by the regulator is enforced externally. But this model is driven by the business. It's driven by the greed and the profit, which is basically the cornerstone of the market economy. So that's why I would say that it's based on a commercial interest, which is uh, making it uh, more resilient than any kind of regulation which you need to apply and then like penalize if somebody is not following it, etc. 
what I still believe, what the, uh, how to say, so she, uh, like building out the awareness that you don't need to own your product forever because you uh, building the awareness that uh, uh, there will be somebody next after you who could benefit from this product. So please don't use it forever. Don't be this person who, who, who does that. But rather, uh, there will be, yeah, there will be many, many different, uh, like it's, it's a long, uh, like large economy, which can be built if the products are coming from the consumer hands on the right time, on the good condition. So basically what you personally can do is like keep your uh, product in a good condition. Don't break it. Don't uh, put the cover around your phone. Uh, make sure that it goes from you uh, to the next user when it still has value, not when it's like uh, absolutely useless. And, and that's basically, yeah, what we are thinking about being important. Good recommendations. I see we have some questions from the audience also. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, th this, this question actually uh, ties uh, very much into this absolutely useless uh, thing uh, because uh, my experience has been that I usually replace my phone because there is something that feels very small wrong with it, like a display or, or maybe a speaker or something. I, I, I recently had to fix you know, one key, the M key on my keyboard didn't work. And so Apple had to replace the whole keyboard, the speakers, the CPU, everything pretty much was replaced because the M didn't work. And I mean, do do you kind of uh, see yourself as as kind of uh, bringing any solutions to that part of the challenge with uh, electronics? Uh, where B basically the fact that they're they're just made to be ruined whenever something uh, small breaks down. Consumer electronic products, the business model is built different way currently. It's built in a way that uh, the, the deal between the brand and the consumer is typically that I'm selling you something as a brand and you, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna see you as a consumer any, any, any time soon. I, or basically not at all. I don't know when you're coming back. And that's why every point to make money out of this relationship is related to like that kind of practice is what you just described that you make things hard to repair that you make uh, uh, products easy to break etc because the reason is there that the product should last like two years and uh, the product has no use for the brand himself anymore at all so that's the how to say that's the reason why you why you get that kind of experience. If we if it would be other way around, so meaning there would be deal that okay, you will use this uh, computer from Apple, but you also give it back to Apple in let's say some predictable time when Apple be can basically uh, they will become interested this product being able to keep it more easily in a good shape so it wouldn't break that way. It would be easier to fix, etc. So meaning their motivation moves to the different place. As do you see what I mean? So they, they actually want to sell this product again. So they wouldn't need to buy virgin materials. So they could make additional revenue from giving it to the new customer for the second, for the third life cycle. So that's the basically the, mm, that comes with the current business model and uh, that needs to change. You can't really tell as a regulator to Apple that no, you need to produce your products different ways, but you can make, uh, like we can build up a business model, which, which motivates Apple to, to build the products in a way it would be easy to repair because they are themselves interested of repairing them, not you as a consumer. Excellent. Another question from the audience. Go ahead. Uh, actually, two questions. Um, uh, there have been uh, different projects about cell phones with replaceable parts, like Project Arab from Google, something like five, six years ago. 
but actually I haven't heard about that since when. Maybe could you elaborate why in your, why do you think, well, it was not launched? And the second question concerning uh, also giving away things, again, to the brand. Currently, there is practice in Apple shops that you bring your cell phone, and when you buy new, you receive some discount. But uh, maybe, uh, for example, if I don't want to buy, again, Apple, or I want to go to some other brand, or maybe I don't want to... Um, uh, buy iPhone, uh, buy phone at all. Then for me, it does. Uh, for as if as for consumer, it doesn't make sense to bring that product back because I'm just doing revenue for the company and I'm not getting anything back unless I buy. So, do you have any idea? For example, if I, as a customer, through your platform, I give away my old device and I'm accumulating so to say, virtual credit points that I can uh, spend on something else that I like or that I need more at this point? I didn't know, I don't actually know about the Google project. What was the first question? Can you repeat it a little bit? Or what do you mean by this Google project? It was Project Ara, uh, the cell phone where you can replace parts. And it was from 2015, oh. 2016. But as you haven't heard about that, I think the project was only an idea, a startup, and it was not uh, widely popular. Yes, phone, I, think. Yeah. I, I have seen those kind of uh, projects more. So those kind of modular and easily fixable phones, one way or another, coming to the market. I don't really see them too much different as any other products. So for us, it is the same. Our model doesn't change. Um, so of course it's good if, it, if it's coming, but in the end of the day, it's a question about the life cycle. So life cycle needs to be there. Is it the shorter or longer? It depends on the, how the product is designed and how quickly technology evolves. But concerns now, like, uh, the quickest adaptation of this solution, what we have, is not around providing the best uh, flexibility to customers. Because uh, or, or you being able to switch between Samsungs and Apples, etc. The reason being that uh, the cost of producing the phone, this 80,000 liters, is so huge resource on your hand. So meaning we, we need to build a, like a really strong commercial initiative to make uh, move a needle so the people would actually do and follow the cycle. So that's why the savings, what can be uh, granted and given to the customers are related to first, the secondary product, secondary market value, and second, uh, the price, what the brands are ready to pay for the loyal customer per uh, transaction. So meaning that's why we are not building it that way as you described, but it's basically like, hey, if you take this plan, stay with Apple. If you don't stay with Apple, you are not getting that kind of savings, but we still make, take back your phone for sure. But some, uh, uh, like, let's say, some economical sa savings will be lost if you are not staying loyal with the brand who who basically introduced um, you to fair on this, if, if you see what I mean. Thank you very yes. much, uh, Hendrik. I'm afraid we have run out of time. Um, great uh, presentation and uh, thank you for answering the questions. Applause, ladies and gentlemen.